Hi Sea Stars! Today Moon is here with you to be unboxing the Dreamcatcher Mixed Star photo book. I know this is late. I'm very sorry. I love you guys and appreciate your patience. The whole box is just basically a matte box, but it does because it is matte, it does get like little scratches and stuff on it easily. I think you can tell when I turn it in the light. So I try to be super careful with it. So let's do the big reveal. I have the signed one. And if you saw Jelly's unboxing of the Exit Make Star photo book, they're obviously different. The other, hers is not as thick but bigger, but they're both really high quality, and I'll get into the details of all of that as we go along. I would say, um, I think the book should have had like a slip case or like a dust sleeve. People call them different things on it, and I also think the texture was a bit strange for them to do autographs on. It doesn't look as bad on camera, but in real life they're kind of like faded looking and just a little bit sad. I also am not a big fan of the brown, but the um, clock dream catcher thing is really cool. Um, I showed you guys the bottom of the box, but I didn't explain here's what it looked like, and here's this little pocket. Inside came the photo card set. You get one per member, no group or unit cards. Um, they're matte as well, and so I wanted to be really careful not to scratch them, so I hope it's okay, but I'm going to show you them in the sleeve. I have them in, in my binder. Um, I think that was the heater, but I'm not exactly sure. Actually, no. That was us doing laundry. <laughs> I'm stupid. I'll show you closer up. As you guys know, I always organize um, my photo cards in age order, unless it's Luna, in which case I have them in order of debut. I made these, so <laughs> they, they, you, don't, you don't get those. Um, Guyon's isn't as yellow in person. I'm not sure why the camera is picking it up that way. But anyway, let's move on to the meat and potatoes, the actual photo book. Um, of course, depending on which tier you were able to get, um, you got different benefits. There were stickers, uh, a bookmark set, mm, a personalized video message, credits in the back of the book, um, all kinds of different things. But I just have the photo cards to show you. We start off with this pretty matte black, which turns into glossy. One second, let me prop up my velvet thing some more so you can see better. I'm really sorry about that. Hopefully we can take that out in post-production. I'm kidding, we'll probably forget. Okay, let's hope that this looks nicer. Otherwise, I'm just gonna KMS and start again. Um, could be better, could be worse. Um, this is the first section of the photo book. It actually comes in, if I'm remembering correctly, three sections. I like all of them. I think the first and the last is my favorite though. Shout out to NCT Dream. Um, <laughs> it has obviously each member in these beautiful silky dresses and sort of um, natural looking makeup which isn't often something that we get to see from Dreamcatcher unless sometimes when they're doing like magazines. I skipped a page by mistake. Is that better? Yes. Jelly came to the rescue. Everybody say thank you, Jelly. Yogi? I think this color is really beautiful, um, especially on Jiu. For some reason, I feel like Jiu 
usually gets put into warm colors, pinks and reds and oranges. I might be wrong, that's just kind of how I feel. Like when I picture her in my head, I usually see her in those colors. And Sion, she just looks so cute. That really was perfect, thank you, Jelly. We actually were both able to get fan sign slots for the newest era that just came out, End of Nightmare, and we're really excited about it. We've seen, well, Jelly has seen a photo of her fan sign slot, but I got mine from somebody else, and for some reason, it's been over a month and they still haven't sent me a photo of mine, so like I'm a little pressed, but I guess we'll see how that turns out. If I get gooped, you guys know you'll be the first I rant to. I do think it's like a little strange that for some of them with Hondong and Bora, um, they have pattern dresses on. This has foxes, shooting stars, roses, um, and like planets and stuff. So it kind of is an eclectic I would say. I think I would have preferred if they were all were just very simplistic dresses, like Gio and Xion's, for example. I'm pretty sure Yuyan is the most popular member. That's what I see a lot online, and then I think Jiu is the second most popular. And no Tina Shade, because you guys know I love Dreamcatcher, I love my girlies, but they're actually the two at the bottom for me. Um, I think my bias order is Gaian. Of course, you guys know I love her. Um, Dami, Handong, and Xion kind of fight for the third spot. And then Sua, Jiu, Yu Yun. Like I said, I love all of them, so like me putting them in that order, it's not like any tea. I do think that the dark navy blue looks beautiful on her. Hantong is just overall so underrated, it hurts my soul. She's an underrated visual. Um, as well as a singer. I am glad in more recent comebacks she's been getting more lines because that's what Queen deserves. So I hope to see more from her in the future. My beautiful, beautiful baby. She's so cute. I love, I don't think this is Lattice, but it like reminds me of Lattice, how the sunlight comes through it really gently. I think that's super pretty. I really like the location that they chose for her. It's all like in the same building slash room, but they all managed to have somewhat different sets. And as I'm sure you've noticed by now, it's not an age order. I'm not sure why that is. Sorry, that was sliding and annoying me. Um, and this is the same pattern as Handong's, except for it's like in this cream color instead of the dark blue. Like it has the foxes and everything on it. Do you have a favorite Dreamcatcher photo shoot? I don't know if I have an exact... <laughs> I don't know, because I feel like they always come out with such quality um, things. Everything from the Nightmare photo shoot up until now, like they're all always really, really nice. This, ah, this shoot, especially for Miss Yubin, she just looks so beautiful. Hold on, you'll see. She really did not come to play on the day of the shooting. 
I love like the coral, cor corally kind of pink that they chose for her lips. I just think it suits her very well. And I liked that there was unit photos scattered in between. As I'm sure you read, this is part two. Part two has a um, very urban feel. But the styling as far as like contacts and hair is similar to the last one. Honestly, I'm just not really like a big urban fashion sort of person. Uh, it's probably some of the, like part of the reason why Alone in the City out of like the album photo books probably is like my least favorite. But I mean, these girlies could be wearing trash bags and I'd still be living for it, let's be honest. I discovered something somewhat recently that, I mean, I would say I'm low-key offended except for I'm full-on offended. Somebody was telling me that they don't like Dreamcatcher ballads and I was like, you can't see me right now but I'm the white guy blinking meme. Like excuse me what the fuck did you just say? <sighs> this skirt looks so cute on her, I love the color. I'm just like. Queens of versatility, queens of vocal magic, okay? Like, literally everybody in Dreamcatcher can sing. And especially, like, when their voices blend together, I just, oh, I'm sent to another dimension. I guess people who tend to kind of, like, speed metal and, like, rock and, like, genres closer to that don't typically, like, the kind of ballads that Dreamcatcher do, but that's as far as people who, like, because I know some people who just, as far as K-pop goes, just like Dreamcatcher, like, they don't like other ones because they don't suit their style, which is, like, totally fine if that's their opinion. I feel like I talked around a point but didn't make a point, so I hope that you guys were able to draw a conclusion from what I said. The fashion, I wish that they'd taken the jacket off of Bora. It seems unnecessary. I know they were like, oh my god, she's in a sports bra. But y'all put her in a sports bra, so don't fuck it up with this fucking big ass trench coat. What the hell? Um, in general, I'm not really a big fan of the coats. I don't really like Dommies either. Or this wrap thing that Yu Yan has on. I do really like Hondong's outfit with the light green skirt and the white blouse. Don't get me wrong, she looks beautiful. I especially love the color on her. I just don't really like the style of the top. Xion's outfit I think is really cool, but again, for some of the shots at least, I wish the jacket was taken off, although it really is a look. I especially like this strappy part on the skirt. For Bora, I think that looks so pretty. And is a nice touch. She just... The camera loves her and she loves the camera. She knows how to do like so many poses and look cute or mysterious or... I don't want to say majestic, like fierce. I don't know. She's just stunning. She really is though. And... Miss Tommy, she looks so cute. The dress is sort of ill-fitting. I am assuming that was intentional. And I like that she has um, more feminine wear on because sometimes I feel like the, well, you know, it kind of depends. If the more masculine attire is something that she chooses or if it's something that's sort of like pushed on her for attention because I know that somewhat androgynous um, styling and idols can catch attention sometimes. Overall my point is, is that I want her to be comfortable and wear what she wants to within reason. I understand that they have stylists. Um, I don't like the frayed stringies here but other than that I think the jacket's cool with the tie around and the zippers. I wish they'd taken more care when doing her hair, but I get it. Um, 
I think that that was like the intended look is what I'm trying to say. I also think they were probably wearing the jackets because I would assume that it was very cold up there. I love the cute, I love when um, sort of rugged things are paired with feminine things, like these cute little booties and her um, skirt and blouse. I think that's a really cute look. And Domi back here, she has on these really pretty heels with these bows around her ankles, but I'm not sure if you can see them. Um, and with all of the make stars that I've actually looked at, I like Gio's shoes too. Um, they're not bad about white space. I know I say that as we're staring straight at a completely white page, but stick with me. I think <laughs> it's not excessive and it's not too much. Like it doesn't bother me. We're at part three and you can see the lovely seam in the spine there, but that means that the book is bound well since it's with thread and not glue. I really love this part of the photo book. They, I don't know if it was editing. Well, I think it was a mixture of editing and really well thought out and done makeup that just makes them look like dead. And usually that would be an insult, but in this case, it's like the highest form of a compliment. Cause it's just so spooky and it per perfectly like matches the atmosphere of the shoot and the fashion. Um, they're wearing some things that I've never seen anything like before, and I think that's super cool. I'm also a big fan of the veils. So yeah, I think this ending part is a plus. I'm not sure if they had a different stylist for each, sec each section of the book, but they all did a fantastic job. This material must be really itchy. That, like, faux lace. When we were younger, we had like this um, costume trunk thing, and there were um, fake little gloves in there that were that material, and they were itchy. Dami's like, I don't like like over-sexualizing adults or whatever, but she's looking so sexy in this look. Like her, I don't know, just her silhouette, everything about her. I'm not sure about the pants, but she definitely pulls them off. Um, I'm not sure if you guys were around when the actual Make Star project was created, but in order to get a signed copy, you had to be a supporter within the amount that had to be backed before it reached the goal, if that makes sense. And then after that, they would add tiers. Um, and obviously like different things to the book. Like for a lot of make stars, it'll be like, oh, we reached this amount and it'll go from a, like a soft cover to a hard cover book and you'll get a postcard set and stuff like that. Oh, I got more stuff with this book that I forgot to show you. I'll show you guys here in a second, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, and before the weekend was even over with that they had listed it, they had already um, reached their goal. So I was really proud of them. I thought that was a really good achievement because it just shows how much Insomnia love Dreamcatcher. And it would be cool if they did something like this again. And of course the girls, do you look so fierce there, um, never fail to show Insomnia how much they love us. I feel like the camera's not giving the colors um, and stuff of these pages justice. Yeah, for some reason it's kind of picking up like a purple tone, but it is black. This is frustrating. <laughs> that was my struggle too, I feel though. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen Jelly's um, photo card unboxing thing, we were going through the gigs. I don't know if this is intentional, but you can see like baby pins, like the big ones pinching her dress together. I think it is intentional because there's some on her wrist here. Okay, I was shook for a second. Yeah, 
Yugi on Stress is really out there. I'm kind of on the fence about it, but I'll let you guys tell me what you think. Um, do you see a part of the book that you found to be your favorite? What do you think of the different photo shoots and sections? This pose, like, she really got it. I also love the shoes. And these borders, I'm not really sure what to call those, that they have in this section of the book, I think looks so cool and really nice. Those chess pieces are huge, and to be honest, some of you guys are probably going to roast me, but I have no idea how to play chess. <laughs> Same. I like checkers, so. This is really reminiscent of the scene in Fly High, where they're all around the table, and they pass the knife and ring the bell. And for some reason, this house that they're in reminds me of... Have you guys ever seen the movie, like, Clue? based off of the game. Maybe they're, they were built in the same time period or something. I'm sorry for all the noises, that's our washing machine. What's going on? I love you guys, please don't touch me. I have had so much fun like interacting with some of you um, on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I don't know, I guess I'm just really grateful to have you guys enjoy this space with us and uh, have similar interests and just, I don't know, enjoy our videos because we do want to do our best. And here are the names of the supporters and I feel like I've made some really good friends so that's, oops, always nice. It is always easy to interact with us on Instagram. We're over there every day. Uh, my name over there obviously is Sluggy Store and hers is Jellyfish Demon like it is everywhere else. But Okay, yeah. I'm looking in the back. There was a stylist, hair and makeup artist, and an assistant. So it was the same person who styled the whole book. So that's really cool. Um, where was I? Help me. Oh, you're talking about us on Instagram? Yeah. I'll be right back. I gotta get the other extras I wanted to show you guys. Shall I? I'll be the entertainment for right now. All right, here, you don't have to move. I just had to grab these. Y'all, I have a question. If you stay on GWSN, in Pinky Star, what do you think it means? Instead of them doing this, they do that during the <laughs> part. I need to know what you guys think because in Puzzle Moon, they do that. And they're doing the moon. And then in Pinky Star, they're doing this. She says it's like a promise. I don't know. I just know it freaks me out. Okay, we're back from commercial break. Yes. Okay, so I also got this postcard, which as you can see is clearly from the third um, words, uh, part of the photo book, and this stand E. The back has nothing on it. Well, this actually isn't a postcard, as you can see, it's a stand E as well. So you get two stand E's. This is from the Welcome to the Dream World concert. I just put that in there because I didn't like the extra space. <sighs> anyway. Um, who, what is like a group that hasn't done a make star yet that you would like to see Twice. have one? Twice doesn't need a make star. It would just be fun to participate in. <laughs> they don't need crowdfunded. Okay, that's true. I think it'd be cool if Gugadon did one. I think it'd be epic if Ladies Cub did one. I think it'd be really cool if Barry Good did one. I have a lot that I could actually throw out there that need it. There's a few artists that I can think of that I would really love to see one from. And there's some artists who have gotten several, which is super cool as well. It's a nice way for both parties, the artists and the fans, to show each other like their appreciation and love. 
Astra. and just like gratefulness. Yes, Aster does have three. Oh, and you do get this ribbon, but the ribbon is like somewhat pointless because it's just like in the box, so it doesn't actually divide anything or anything like that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please check out all of our other Dreamcatcher unboxings in a playlist that we have on the channel. We unbox all kinds of other stuff, so check it out. And talk to us on Instagram. I want to meet you guys.